Um, Scott's asking a question. You can probably help this help me out on this one too, Dave. But he's asking, uh, crimped versus soldered PL fifty two fifty nines. Uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah. And I've always done the soldered ones, and um, you know, it's the the thing the thing about soldering um, PL two fifty nines is you need a big you need a big gun, a uh, soldering iron, either a humongous iron or, or a soldering gun in order to get enough heat going so you can get that that braid kind of, you know, um, down, you know, in onto the onto the connector. And I've I've seen all of the hints and kinks that the ARL has posted over the years. You know, people have given you all these tips on how to do it better. And um, I always get I, I can do it. And I always get mediocre results. <laughs> yeah. And when I, um, so I've been, you know, instead of making jumpers and cables, I've been, you know, I just buy a jumper these <laughs> days. <laughs> oh, no. Come on. Come on. Come on. All right. <laughs> um, and most of them are crimped and I've got no problem with the crimped connectors and maybe, yeah. maybe what I need to do is I need to get us, I need to get a crimper and a yeah. set of, and, and a yeah. set of those shells and, um, and, and just start doing it. So. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not cheap. The crimper costs, uh, I think I paid about 40 or 50 bucks for the crimper mm -hmm. and, and, and the individual, uh, be it, I buy them from, uh, DX engineering. Okay. Yes. Uh, I don't buy a lot of stuff from DX Engineering, but I do buy the PL259 connectors for sure. And uh, and they're the right size for the, uh, what is it, R R RGX or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, or the reducers? It, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I can't remember the, the what's the cable we're using, 8X, right? 8X. Oh, yeah, actually, if you're, if you're crimping, you don't need a reducer. You just buy, you just buy a crimp shell that's yeah, that it's size. The, yeah, that size. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, if I remember right, they're about, oh, man, you buy them at, like 25 in a bag or whatever. They're about five bucks a piece, I think. Mm -hmm. But uh, but that's the way to go. And yeah. I quit soldering. I quit trying to solder the braid on those PL two fifty nines. Yeah, I mean, so you you inevitably melt something that you don't oh. want to melt. You know, you, 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 you and so you you wind up with either the the braid and the center conductor shorted together. Yeah, which never, yeah. That never that never works well. But uh, or you melt the Teflon insulator that holds the pin uh, mm -hmm. straight. So now you have a pin that's you know sort of crooked or something. It's, yeah. No. Oh, it's always it's always something. Or you burn your fingers or or something like that. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I usually get you know five dollars a crimp ain't that bad. Uh, I mean, I'm buying these silver um, PLs, and that's how much they are. You know, it's yep. you get a yep. you get a you, you get a silver silver plated PL two fifty nine. You get a reducer and. Um, yeah, you're you're six bucks into it, so it's. Um, now you yeah. still got to solder the center pin. I mean, there's no yeah. way around that. But, yeah, but that doesn't take long. That's not. That's well, easy. that you can that you can do. That's not that's not the big heat sink. So, no, no, yeah. no. You yeah. don't want a lot of heat there because then, it, like no. you say, the pin the pin goes crooked. Yep. So. <clears throat> Yep, exactly. And 45's got a great tip. You know, if you have a crimper for power poles, you can change out the dies for dies made by for crimping coax. So Oh really? That is yeah. nice to know. I'm looking so, over here. I I have both crimpers. Okay. You know, one for each. I didn't think it well, maybe maybe I you, suppose you, you might need the PowerWorks brand crimper because I I just reach behind me here. I mean I this is my, well, this is my power pole crimper, but I don't know if I can repl I can take the dies out in it or not. Yeah. Yeah, but I bought that years ago. So, okay. But that's a good thing. That's a good thing to know. You know, if you want one tool for everything, get something with a set of dies that'll do both um, coax and um, power poles. And um, yeah, yeah. Uh, crimps. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, there we go. Larry crimps the small coax to the PL259s and solders the large stuff. It is easier to work with the big 
the big stuff, the eight, the eight U, the 213 and that, um, definitely for sure. Um, LMR 400, you, you almost have to have the, the their specific um, shells, their their housings, other because it is um, otherwise otherwise it's you're probably going to have higher level of failure um, than not. But um, hmm. so we got some good, yeah, um, yeah. William says um, after seeing how copper melts together, I'm you know crimping into that too, and that's that's a very important point uh, when you crimp. The copper wires, they're actually, um, oh, what I can't remember the exact word there, but they're kind of forming, annealing, or something like that um, in the crimping process. So you actually have a bonded connection. KB9 VBR antennas are simple, effective, and affordable VHF and UHF antennas for amateur radio, MERS, public safety, and GMRS. Made in the USA with quality parts. Get yours online at jpole-antenna.com.